Hey, welcome to Sellerize review and tutorial. In this video, we're going to show you how to use Sellerize. We're going to show all the tools, explain to you what they do, how they can benefit you and your Amazon business. We're going to talk about the pricing of the tool as well. In the description, I'm going to have a free account of Sellerize with a cool discount for you. So it's going to be a video with timestamps. You can check them out down in the description if you're looking for a specific tool and how to use it. I hope you enjoy this video today with me, Dima. He's the creator of Sellerize and he's an Amazon seller. I believe eight figure Amazon seller. I have a lot of people are learning from you, man, including myself and that's pretty cool man i have six figure business on amazon some people have seven somebody's just starting somebody has nine figures i don't know everybody we you know learn from each other it's interesting to learn from you also i'm gonna say you have pretty positive vibe in your videos man which i really think it's cool to watch and uh, yeah man can you introduce yourself and then we're gonna dive into the content what's up guys nice <laughs> to see everyone <laughs> there you uh, go yeah whoa well, thank you so much for inviting me there was a, a great idea to go through everything because uh, a lot of people get yeah. in more and more questions about Sellerize and I record a lot of tutorials but at the same time there was never been downloaded the the full review of Sellerize and how it can benefit your business. Just few few words about what we, we have done in the last few years we was developing this uh, fantastic tool for Amazon sellers. The reason why because we don't develop anything that's already available on the market. We usually develop something that is missing. And mm -hmm. I was developing this for my brand and for my company. And after that, we just opened doors for everybody. So at a small fraction of the fee, you can get access to all these tools and make uh, your business grow uh, again. Yeah, pretty cool. It's like sort of an all-in-one tool. It has many solutions. You have like reimbursements. You have different, different additions for sellers, like if things were keywords. Yeah, profits, uh, alerts. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, uh, there's, plenty. there's about 15 different tools that you can find inside one, one powerhouse. Perfect. Today, we're going to go through it again in the description. I'm going to have all the links. Also, links to Dima if you want to contact him and talk to him, I guess. We're going to have maybe your LinkedIn or something, man. Like, are people are going to be useful for them, I guess. So, yeah, man, let's uh, start, I guess. Let's uh, share the screen. I'm going to give you here the share in option. And uh, I guess okay. we can go from A to Z through the tools and see how they work. We in Sellerize in a kind of demo version of this tool. So some things is going to be a bit, uh, not different, but almost the same. When you look at the, at the real accounts, uh, you can see like uh, you can analyze more, but uh, we don't present real accounts because we don't want uh, anyone to get uncomfortable with the numbers. Yeah. So this is the demo account. It's basically almost the same as uh, you would register and see this uh, from inside yourself. On the front page, you're going to see all the tools that are available for you. In addition, you're going to have every video tutorial on every tool. But today we're going to go with the Volvo with more practical way of learning about Sellerize and see how the Sellerize works and exactly like some insights uh, why we use these tools and how nice. they benefit our, our businesses. So it's not it's not a typical tutorial where you can just like click on the buttons. You're going to hear today some, some cool advices that yeah. we're going to give you throughout this call. So awesome. stay with us. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> uh, yeah. On the, on the, on the left-hand side, guys, as you can see, I hope you can see my, my yeah, screen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, you can see there's a lot of different tools. We're going to go one by one. Some of them I'm going to go more in detail. Some of them we're just going to explain in a couple of sentences. Don't worry. It's not going to be a boring match, you know, like in the yeah. middle of the school, we're also going to do a couple of dances with the strip, uh, you know, like, and, uh, <laughs> And, Let's go, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or whatever, whatever jokes we need to keep you entertained and yes. make your Amazon business growing. Yes. So let's Good let's combo. just jump here on the sales and profit. So right. the sales and profit is one of the main dashboards that majority of the Amazon sellers look into it. Beside of this uh, dashboard, you you have a, a mobile application that you can download for iOS or Android devices. Mm -hmm. It's an application that will connect to your uh, Sellerize account. So a mobile application is great to use when you just want to see your numbers on the go because dash the dashboard itself will give you more detailed views. So as you can see here in the sales and profit, you can hear Help Hub. It's a quick tutorials that you can mm -hmm. have. There's different filters. Let's just quickly go through them. Uh, so first of all, uh, it's these four tiles that you can see here. It's it's your number, sales, net profit. You can change them. If, I, if I'm going to click on one of them, you're going to see the window pops up and you can just enable more, more views mm -hmm. that you want to see throughout this dashboard. Or you can just reduce them by just unclicking on wherever you don't want to see. So mm -hmm. this will look more organized for you. Another part here, you can see there's uh, different uh, products. On this page, you can see filters right here. Let me just show you, like if I if I gonna go look through like 
30 days period, you can see mm -hmm. like a sales day by day, different numbers. You can just enable or disable some configurations. You can see like there's a, a plenty of them, like organic sales, mobile mm -hmm. sales. Nice, nice. You can you can also download everything with a one click on the over button right here. There's a button to download this to the CSV format. Or you can have it here, export this. You also can change it to C by week or by months. Mm -hmm. As you can see right here, so you can see month by month because it's like a different because it's only one month. But if you're gonna have like a, a bigger custom range dates, mm -hmm. you're mm -hmm. gonna see month by month. But let's move back to the days. You can also mm -hmm. see here in a transpose view what what does it mean? It's like you can see it like date is all here on the left, mm -hmm. and there are cells on the right, and all the metrics. But you can uh, click it like this. And then you can see the uh, the metrics move mm -hmm. to the left and dates move to the right. So this is uh, something that we use when we when we analyze week by week performance. So mm -hmm. you can see like okay, you can see like week to week, and it will help you to download reports in a better way to Excel. It's like there's different teams to use different structures in analytics. So I'm just giving you an example of like what we're doing. We like like with these weekly reports and daily reports. Sometimes they're valuable as well when you just want to dig into the specific day. But overall, weekly reports is important for us as well. Mm -hmm. Like let's just unclick it. There's a, another filter I just showed you. You can just see every product right here. You can see the orders, coupons. There's another filter right here. Uh, it's when you see every product and you can see sales and numbers located like that. You know, like so you can sometimes people use the Excel spreadsheets. So that will replace this analytics for you. And as I say to you, you can always download everything and just customize the way the way that you like. And right here, there are product filter as well. Uh, you can see right now all the products. But let's say sometimes you wanna you have let's say five different brands under the account. It's for the people who have a, like a bigger accounts. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes people have like let's say you sell like HP products and you sell Apple products, mm. and you wanna have uh, different categories of the brands. So you can always add the group of the different SKUs, combine them together, or maybe you have like products that you're launching right now, and you wanna see how your launch is performing. So you can you can mm -hmm. create a group name. You can you can call it say launch. You know like and you can call this launch or whatever, like start yeah. start one. And then you just combine them uh, by SKU, ASIN or parent ASIN level. And then you create this uh, nice uh, table view. So that's one of my uh, favorite ways when I switch between brands and see the performance of the brands. So this will help you because this is the combined, let's say, sales. You will be able to see like only brand by brand. The next level of sales and profit and analytics is when you go in inside each product. So let's say I go in into this product and then now I can see more details about sales and uh, performance of this product it has also different filters. As you can see right here, I showed you like you can like transpose here and you can see like uh, days like this and there's plenty of buttons to click. So we're not going to go through each of them. <laughs> but and generally, the idea of the dashboard is to get like bird's eye view on what's going on in our business right now in the last 30 days yesterday today custom range and yeah, then we yeah. work with the data as we prefer some but some people like maybe you know as you mentioned go with their team maybe week by week or you have the transpose for that and pretty much based on this you can see what's going on in your business right yeah like for example uh, let's say i see ad orders you see like mm -hmm. like all my ad cost so yeah. i go to ad cost i pin this column to the left so mm -hmm. it's right, right now it's it's here and then I, I'm going to pin my profit, for example, you know, like my, let me see where is that. Okay. So margin. And then I see, I want to mm -hmm. uh, pin my profit. So now I can mm -hmm. see my profit and my ad cost. And then mm -hmm. if I see, this is the demo mm -hmm. account, but in a real account, sometimes yeah. you can see big differences between like, let's say you spend today $165 on an ad, mm -hmm. but it creates the negative profit for you. Let's yeah. say $80. So mm -hmm. if you would spend on $80 less, you would be mm -hmm. maybe like break even. And sometimes when you have a person who works with you on a, on your PPC, yeah, sometimes you have a ranking campaign. Sometimes you have like a discovery campaign, whatever campaigns you run, guys, yeah. time to time, you want to make sure you're not wasting and not going negative with, with your company. Just by controlling PPC spend, sometimes you can be profitable overall because sometimes ppc is just a waste of your money don't take me wrong and it doesn't yeah. mean like you have to discontinue ppc but overall you have to dig into the details of your company to the level that you understand like what exactly creates profitability and losses so nice yeah also refunds you always can check like what's your percentage of your re refunds just go like product by product, number, number by number, analyze this on, let's say, two weeks or one week periods, and then you're going to see what products create you more issues than others. Because sometimes when you look at the product, you're like, hey, what if I'm going to reduce a cost of goods? Or another part, when you look at the refund percentages, you're like, hey, 
my refund percentage is let's say seven percent which is quite high like yes. for normal categories normal categories like i'm to- talking about like beauty supplements should be around mm-hmm. three to four percent not not that much not more but if you sell in closing or other categories the percentage of returns could be like 15 percent or higher so mm-hmm. this way you're like hey if my return pr- refund and return percentage is up to 10 percent you need to think about like what type of packaging you should make. If you ever live uh, in the United States, you've seen like you go into the store and they have a blister packaging. Some blister packaging is so sealed. If you open, you break the package. Mm-hmm. But some packaging you open and packaging is stay almost a brand new. So if you put it back the product and close it, the product looks like a brand new. So you can resell it like a mm-hmm. brand new item. Mm-hmm. So the idea, and today, you know, Vova, today world is changing for Amazon, for logistics. The prices for storage, for fulfillment getting so high. Now you have to become professional in logistics. Like five, seven, six years ago, you just send products to Amazon and you don't worry about logistics. Nowadays, you have to calculate every single cent and every single dollar in your company to make sure uh, you optimize the level of profitability. Like I give you a quick example. We have a fulfillment center as well for Amazon sellers, which is called Asap Warehouse. He, we have a person who uh, we process for him refunds and returns. We do repackaging for him. And yeah. we make him about five to $7,000 every month just from his returns because we repackage a lot. Yeah. And we give him, that's why I'm telling you about the suggestions about uh, packaging renovation, I would say. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. When you have a packaging, you have to think, okay, when someone returned my package, how easy for me to make this product sellable again? Sellable again, yeah. Okay, let's let's move on, okay? Because <laughs> oh, no, no, that's, I, that's I, good, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited. You're about, giving you some good gold nuggets, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah, I can talk about Amazon a lot because that's my favorite way of making money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't think about <laughs> don't think about me as a as an owner of Sellerize and yeah, yeah. yeah I developed this uh, tool and it's nice and I love when people like subscribe and they yeah, they have yeah. benefits uh, from the tool. But overall. My main expertise is the Amazon business. So ask me any questions about Amazon and I will help you, happy to help like to Vovo or anyone else. You know, that's why Vovo say, hey, always don't don't hesitate to reach out directly, okay? Yeah, yeah. So cool. here we can see like what's your organic sales, PPC, uh, multi-channel, promotions, refunds. Uh, there's plenty of information. There's also in configurations right here, you can see there's uh, way more like uh, tacos, ACOS, uh, impressions, coupons, like so mm-hmm. plenty of information that uh, for you guys to consider about analyzing your business. The next step here is the orders. Mm-hmm. As you can see, you can we can show you like oh, wow. what, nice. what states is more performing for you. We're gonna add here another cool view soon. It's um, at what fulfillment centers and how much inventory you have, wow. which is uh, would be an awesome tool as well. We're working on it right right now. The shipments. So this is what you actually been sending to Amazon. Every shipment you can change the name of the shipments. Not here, but uh, when you when you do shipment to Amazon, you can customize your name. But overall, when mm-hmm. you go into Amazon, sometimes it's such a mess. Uh, mm-hmm. You cannot figure out which shipment you sh- ship because. Amazon create the list of the shipments based on a latest update. So if you go, let's say, into the shipment that's been created a year ago, you're going to click on it and then you can kind of save something. The shipment will be stay here at the top in Amazon. But in Sellerize, you can see day by day in the product by product. Let's say if in, in some shipment you send three products in Amazon, it's going to be mixed. In Sellerize, it's going to be separated under each different product. So this way, you're not going to be confused by the shipments. And let's say if you ship uh, 3,000 units and uh, Amazon, oh, let's, say you, let's say you ship 1,600 and Amazon receive only 15.99, it means they lost one unit. Or they receive sometimes too much, which it could be also a problem. Also, we have a system that's called smart pricing, which means each shipment can have uh, its own unit of costs, cost of unit. So let's say you ship products from China, you ship primarily by by ocean, but this time because it was a Q4 or it was uh, uh, some holiday season now, it's like all the time there's some holidays, okay? (laughs) And you decide to ship some inventory by air. So the air costs you more money, but majority of the tools, when they calculate your uh, cost of goods, they kind of have like an average price or default price. We also have a default price. Let's say it's $178 if we take this example. You can always change it. And from the moment you change it, all the upcoming mm. shipments will be changed from 178. Let's say we change to 200. Like all okay. everything here will not be touched, but everything mm. that will be upcoming, all the future yeah. shipments will be 200. Nice. Yeah. 
At the same time, you can, let's say we did these three shipments and oh, let's say we did four shipments and we want to set a group price only for this shipment. So we can set up a good group price, let's say 200, you know, and all uh -huh. these four shipments uh -huh. will be changed. So yeah, right. you see like we, what we did right now, all these four shipments are now changed while all these other shipments mm -hmm. is not touched. So it's, it's happened like, for example, you majority of the tools you sell entire year, you sell and your cost of goods was been like a hundred dollars. And then at the end of the year by Q4, uh, your price went up. Now it's $120. And if you go and change 100 to 120, majority of the tools, they will recalculate your entire year, which oh, wow. is not correct. you know. Mm -hmm. And that's why we developed that's this true. tool to make sure this is more exact and you understand your profits better with everything you do here. The next step, let's move on. Promo and coupons. Right here, you can see all the coupons, all the promotions, all, all the subscribe and save. This is the only mm -hmm. tool that allowed you to see like subscribe and save performance of your products. Yeah, all the promotions. Let's say you're running some like promotions or maybe you're running these coupons. Uh, like one dollar coupons or percentage coupons it's also going to show you like everything that you was doing with the coupons throughout the history of this coupon or promotion that's been cool. all about finances i think i tried to minimize the amount of information to most important that's level uh, the next one it's called profit and loss pnl that's a usual tool that everybody the majority of the people knows usually uh, your accountants or cpa is asking for uh, profit and loss on when, when you're trying to sell a company so when you go to the profit and loss, it's more like a top view of your numbers. You can see your cost of goods. You can see, hey, my cost of goods is progressing. While uh, you can see also percentages mm -hmm. here. Like for example, your sales is 88%, but your cost of goods is 12%. Okay, how I can reduce this to 10%? Mm -hmm. And it's more like for strategic work and also analyzing like what your true net profits yeah. inside the business. And also you can see every category. Uh, you can also export this. If you're going to export this to Excel, it's going to export like values like this, like the names. But if you're going to export in ex Excel expanded, it's going to uh, download the report with, with numbers like that. You see, like uh, when you maximize them, yeah. so it's going to show like everything that uh, you was doing. You Usually when you send this to the accountant, they want to just sell just the basic numbers, you know, just main mm -hmm. categories. But when you do it your, yourself, maybe you want to dig into the numbers in mm -hmm. terms of like the whole company and like say, hey, we we facing such a high refunds. What we can do to reduce refunds? Maybe we can add some instructions. Maybe we can add people some bonus as a some uh, ebook. Maybe we can add people like maybe we can add some inserts with the manuals or uh, that will more clearly explain how to use this product. Yeah. And you would be surprised, guys. But even speaking about like sellerized do you know how many people sometimes they go into the sellerized they, they understand numbers but uh, they never been a business people so for them they require additional education to understand like hey how my taxes works and, and it's great when people asking for additional education it means they becoming more professional the same way as your customers i remember mm. uh, we sell bicycle uh, bicycle seats for me it seems like it's easy you take a bicycle seat and you just <laughs> replace it you know yeah. but it was really funny not funny but i would say it was really surprising but that some people really need detailed instructions how to remove the previous seat how to install and screw the the new seat don't underestimate a power of uh, clear and quality instructions so yes. that's something that you need to work on all the time <laughs> yes gonna reduce refunds returns maybe and all that Exactly. Every dollar saved is every dollar dollar earned. How do mm -hmm. people say in Israel? Yeah, uh, <laughs> something like that, man. <laughs> I think it's in every part of the world. You know, like I think it just was. <laughs> it doesn't matter in which part of the world you save the money, you you still yeah, earn there more. There you go. There you go. Okay, awesome. Another another part here we have here like it's called additional expenses. Let me explain you. Like we have, let's say, like another part. It's called manual adjustments. Manual adjustments is something that you want to add here as expenses that was not counted inside your seller central. Let's say you wanna, let's say you have a designer, designer, and then you select the product, which product uh, person been assigned mm -hmm. to, or maybe he was working on entire brand. You can mm -hmm. assign or you don't have to assign for some product, but let's say you wanna assign for some product, you put the date and you put the amount, let's say you pay him $375. And the moment you're gonna save it, 
is going to be applied to your PNL and also going to be applied for your uh, financial calculations. So the main idea of all these calculations and financial numbers, I have a CPA in my company, like the person who can, and a financial advisor, the person who consistently, the only job they have is just to look at the numbers, the financial numbers, because mm -hmm. you would be surprised by when people ignoring financial analytics in their company, they can be surprised how much they can change the direction of their company while they start to pay attention of like, hey, how much actually we're paying to the designers for one one-time projects? Let's say they pay $800 per one-time project and mm -hmm. they do two, three projects per month. At this money, you can hire a designer for a company for $1,500 a month and complete more projects. Mm. And um, you can train this person to understand your brand better. So you don't need every time to explain <laughs> why this serum works better for the face or why yeah, this yeah. Uh, pencils better than the competitors. So mm -hmm. your your designer, your in-house designer can understand your brand values better and it, he will complete your tasks way faster than this one-time guys. I'm not against one-time guys. Don't, don't get me wrong. We have a big teams. We also ask mm -hmm. service providers time to time to help us because sometimes we're either busy or want to test new concept. Uh, generally speaking, delegating your tasks to other people is uh, is one of the keys for your continuous growth. For sure, man. Dima, and, and yes. so we went from profit and loss to menu adjustments, which we can, as you mentioned, menu, add, add something that was like an expense on a photographer. Maybe we went to get a consulting call from some expert that was extra $200, let's say. So, okay, so we have this here, then it updates in profit and loss, right, you said? Exactly, yeah. It's going okay. to be added on all the levels. It's going to be in a sales and profit. It's mm -hmm. going to be in profit and yeah. loss as well. You're gonna get, you're it. gonna see this everywhere once you do a detail analytics. So this this will be play, placed permanently inside your. You can also delete this or edit it in, in case it's uh, it's something that you also you can you can set up for yourself adjustments like monthly costs. You know, mm. like for example, every month uh, you pay for salarized. Yeah. So you can also add it here, and then it will help you to have a better yeah. uh, also understanding of your financials. Everything that comes as a continuous expenses you also can do can do you know so you can see the future adjustments here and you can let's say if you cancel some services mm -hmm. you can always uh cancel them here yeah it will help you to monitor your books and financial and financials better have we Dima, in profit and loss have we finished uh, going through it because we switched from in the in the second column not in sales and profit and profit and loss yeah um, like look we did sales and profit we did profit and loss now we have uh, ABC analysis. I'm, I'm going to explain in a, few, okay. in a few minutes, like how does it work. Cool, I cool. just say like about many adjustments because many adjustments mainly connect to the profit and loss. So they just like, you know, we step over the ABC analysis. Let's just start with the sure. ABC analysis right now. Sure, sure. I will explain you in a few words. What does it mean ABC analysis? But ABC analysis, it's a tool for companies who has a huge catalogs and for them, it's very important to understand what type of products hold or bring the most amount of profit. And mm. uh, that's how they, they, they split. They split on categories A, B, and C. And this will help them to, to understand, okay, category A is something that we need to focus on. And uh, you want to see, okay, maybe some products from category B, we want to move from, from B to A, or maybe just mm. want to discontinue. Sometimes category C products, it's something that doesn't bring much profit and holds a lot of inventory. Like for example, you can see the configurations. You can put like cost of, mm -hmm. cost of goods. You see here ROI mm -hmm. and margins. And now you can see, okay, what's the ROI on like, for example, this product brings the most amount of profit, but ROI is so low. And mm -hmm. we just, uh, let me give you like a practical example. Yeah, yeah. For instance, you, you launch in a product. And your profitability is, let's say, 100%. Uh, you, you have 100% ROI, correct? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So every cycle of production, let's say every three months or four months. So let's say you produce products in China. And production is about two months. Delivery is another two months. So you have a two, two, four months of cycle of production. And also you need to have like a safety term, another maybe two months. So it's about six months. It's a cycle of production. Mm -hmm. So from the moment you just decide to grow your sales, you need to increase the amount of your inventory, correct? Mm -hmm. the, the problem with the physical product sales, it's uh, before you're trying to, to grow, you need to increase the amount of inventory on hands. Rarely you can grow your price that much that it will mm -hmm. make a lot of sense. So that's why a lot of people uh, in the first two, three years of working on Amazon, on e any e-commerce platform where they sell physical products, 
they struggle with the cash flow. Yeah. Because if your cash flow is 100% or less, even I would say 200% or less, you would be surprised that every time you need to order more inventory, your your, your previous order is not finished yet. It's not yeah. sold, sold out yet. You didn't even make enough money to cover upcoming inventory. Yeah. That's why nowadays it's so popular to have these companies who give you and loans. In- uh-huh. Yeah, funding, uh, loans, inventory, advanced loans. There's a cool one. It's called uh, Seller Founding and mm-hmm. Ability. There, there's plenty mm-hmm. of them. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I'm not affiliated with any of them. You just <laughs> kind of. You, you can. You can try them. I'm. I'm on. I'm on business for so long. I don't need loans anymore. But for for those of you guys nice, who <laughs> who is doing, <laughs> who is working, <laughs> I know. Listen, uh, yeah. but look, train your brain. Don't yeah. be afraid of loans. Loans mm-hmm. is okay. If you don't waste them on the operational expense, what I, what I mean is sometimes I see guys who are trying to get a loan, just don't they don't they don't have enough money, but they don't really understand how much money they make. Mm. They they don't understand their numbers. That's why tools like Sellerize will help you to clearly understand. And now I'm gonna show you as well another tool that we have developed here inside Sellerize that will help you to see like like crystal ball of your profitability. This will help you to decide what your next action should be, how to act when your your uh, money is getting uh, withdrawn from Amazon to your bank account. So this way, when you're facing a problem of uh, not having enough money for inventory or for growth, mm-hmm. there's, there's two ways for you. Way number one is to acquire a loan, which we just spoke with you, or mm-hmm. decrease a speed of your growth. Mm-hmm. But I usually take approach of highest like growth than trying to like slow down. Because if you're trying to slow down, you never know how Amazon will react on, let's say, your increased uh, um, increased prices of sales or maybe you decrease amount of uh, PPC spend. PPC, yeah. And, yeah, we're talking about profitable, let's say, PPC. Mm-hmm. Sometimes mm-hmm. when you run PPC, at, at some point you, you see the, pro- the PPC is... Is not profitable. Some of them is break even, so you probably kill some of the yeah. negative or campaigns with the negative profit with the too high A cost. But at the same time, like you're already maintaining the business, you know, like so mm-hmm. you and if you start to kill campaigns that are profitable just to maintain the growth, it could be very dangerous for your business in the long run. Mm-hmm. So be careful with that. Okay. Yes. <laughs> the next tool we have it's called payout report. So the payout report. It's something that we just recently released uh, for our users. What does it do? It's every time you have a money sent from Amazon to your bank account, let's say they, they send you $12,000 or $50,000. A lot of people, they don't understand in this $50,000, how much money I should put back mm-hmm. to the inventory, how much money I should put back to the PPC. If let's say they have a PPC charged from their credit card, if it's not assigned to their seller central account, how much money is I actually made as a, as a profit? Uh, and especially happening with the people who has uh, partners. I used to have a lot of partners and sometimes you get a withdrawal, let's say $50,000 and a partner uh, telling you, Hey, let's split this money. 25, 25,000. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't work this way. Like you first, this is the demo account. So in a demo account, you wouldn't be able to see a cost of goods, but a cost of goods is something that you you have to calculate. Let me see the settings. Yeah, you see the show, show cost of goods. If if I activate this here, because it's a demo account, like for example, this is the demo account, it show you cost of goods. So this is, I'm just giving you a quick example. Let's say Amazon, Amazon withdraw you $87,000. You see right mm-hmm. here? Yes, sir. Quick example, yeah. So Amazon will draw you $87,000. We'll show like exactly what happened with this money. Uh, no, you made sales of $87,000. Yes. Amazon will draw you $28,000. See here at the bottom? Mm-hmm. Sorry. Mm-hmm. At the bottom, it's $28,925.30. Mm-hmm. So this is how much money is landed on your bank account here. Yes, but out of this $28,925, do not be too crazy <laughs> and go buy a Lamborghini yes. or pre-order Lamborghini. <laughs> uh, you need because... to understand exactly yeah. yeah, exactly how much money you can spend out of it mm-hmm. or reinvest. So mm-hmm. what I was saying, like you see this cost of goods, it was mm-hmm. $18,000. So mm-hmm. out of this 28, 18, basically they locked. You cannot touch them because this money you you need to use to buy again the inventory because only inventory is what kind of making you money if you don't have inventory you don't have sales like that's oh. simple rule so the moment your your inventory level go down 
or not having enough inventory is like how you're going to generate more money. So this money you have to lock. So now we have, let's say $10,000 from, and then $10,000, you decide on how, what you're going to do. You're going to pay for your, mm -hmm. for maybe some services, employees, maybe you're going to withdraw some, some money for yourself. You can find out how to split this money, but I, I will give you like my Sorry. practical example, what I used to do from the actual profit I made. I usually was splitting this 50, 50, 50 was going, 50% 50 was going back to the business for reinvestment to make sure business is healthy and keep continue growing. And another 50, I was spending wherever, wherever way I want, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. that's, that's how, nice. um, that's how I usually like, this is the simplest rules, you know, like yeah. there's probably a lot of like financial advisors, but I'm just giving you my, my practical yeah. way, yes. how I used to do it when I, when I get started. All right. Nice uh, payouts. Yeah. So you probably understood what is a payout means and payouts guys is such important tool to, to look at this, uh, every withdrawal you have, every payout mm -hmm. that happened, go mm -hmm. check cost of goods, make sure you, you put this money aside, maybe go into your bank account. If you, if you located in USA, it's very easy within same company, you can have a few bank, like a uh, bank accounts and uh, just do the transfer between them. Let's say you have a bank account that only holds the money for your inventory and you never touch it because the moment you have everything in one bucket, it feels like you have a lot of money. <laughs> but the moment you start to pay <laughs> your bills, there's a cool book. It's called Profit First. Uh, Mike if... Mikulovich. Uh... Yeah, Mike Mikulovich. Yeah, yeah. Because some people, they think this way. The moment I'm going to start to make more money, it's going to fix all my problems. Believe me or not, <laughs> the moment you're going to start to make more money, you will have even bigger problems that you need to solve. And at some point you will realize, I will give you like simple example. When you're just at the beginning of your company or growth, sometimes it's easy to solve your issues by just reducing your personal expense. But at the, at the some point of your company, when the company is so big, reducing your personal expenses will almost have no difference, you know? <laughs> of course, un unless you just fly private jets or trying yeah. to like waste money on uh, luxury rentals yeah, you, yeah. you shouldn't be stupid you know but overall mm -hmm. at some point you will realize you need to understand like what's the roi what's the production cycle how to reduce this yeah. how to move inventory from one warehouse to another uh, how to reduce this found uh, outcomes you know and packaging improvements like we we have company here we, we also will give you a cool example uh, one of the company we're hel helping with so they have a packaging, okay? And the packaging is a poly bag. So when packaging arrive into Amazon, Amazon open the poly bag and they, they look at the poly bag from all their sites and they measure in this. While the poly bag is just a, it's a soft material. So yeah. basically what we're doing for them, we take the corners and we take the tape and we, we make it smaller. So mm -hmm. this way the product goes in a completely different size mm -hmm. of the category nice. and you have a low, exactly. You have a lower fulfillment oh, cost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all this, all these numbers have to be pre-calculated nice. because you can be surprised. Yeah. Like you're going to pay, let's say $8 because someone helped you to improve this, but your competition now paying 1475, they're losing six dollars on every cell just because they didn't tape the corners you know yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah exactly that, that's very go. important it's very important good stuff all right so we went through this huge financial block inside Celerize that's such important for you guys to make sure you see the numbers you analyze the numbers don't be lazy educate yourself mm. there's another uh, cool book it's called financial intelligence i highly suggest you to read this like i i, I told you about profit first it's it's not like a it's more like a personal improvement book, uh, but financial intelligence. It's when you want to become seriously like knowledgeable. And look, a lot yeah. of people they'll tell you, "Hey, I'm not the accountant, I'm not the CPA, but you're the business owner. There's only one person in your company who has the highest interest in making more money. It's you. So mm -hmm. make sure you just educate yourself. And I will give you cool advice that I I shared recently with my wife. She told me like, "Hey." You read so many books all the time. How are you doing <laughs> this? And I told her, listen, get a list of the books that I don't know, like for example, for some category, let's say finances or personal performance or meditation, you, mm -hmm. you, you can choose any category like habit building and then go on YouTube and type the name of the book and say summary. And you're mm -hmm. going to see this book in 15 minutes. You can acquire so much knowledge, like compressed knowledge within let's say go to the workout like what i do i go to the gym i go on a, on a treadmill and i walk for one hour in one mm -hmm. hour i can listen for 
summary of four books on yeah. average summary is like 15 minutes i know it's not a whole book but you don't need the intention of reading the entire book you just want to have a like the best advices from the book like overall sense. yeah you can always read it okay uh, maybe we're gonna cut this from the interview okay <laughs> or maybe we could just get as a, as a bonus okay <laughs> okay okay sure man so cool man. I, I don't cool. want people people feel boring you know like from i don't think man i don't think they're gonna be bored you're pretty much dropping knowledge bombs and good stuff for people to improve their businesses so i think it's really cool man which i appreciate so yeah okay well Thank you so much. Uh, let's continue going. Uh, you see sometimes we have here like a, let's call beta, like a PPC dashboard. I can tell you in Sellerize is not the most advanced PPC dashboard. I was doing this PPC dashboard just basically for myself to see the numbers from like a bird view, you know, like yes. from the top. So this like, for example, if you run 1000 campaigns for this product, let's say for the HP, it kind of compress all of them and it gives you like total numbers of impressions, clicks and everything. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have like a more efficient PPC dashboard, there's plenty of them on the market. That's why I was not trying to develop a new PPC dashboard to give you all these uh, details. Eventually, we're going to we're gonna make more details inside PPC dashboard because I already see some imperfections in other companies that we used to use. Overall, right here, you can go and you can see sponsored brands, display and sponsored video performance. You can see every your video. Just click on it, look at this. And maybe as I was saying, as a business owner, you just want to see the performance quickly. You don't want to dig into like heavier Excel files or some huge dashboards. You want to see like top of your information okay how much exactly money we spent on on uh, video ads this month and how much money how much gross profit we made out of all the video ads inside inside the company mm -hmm. and then you can just dig a bit uh, deeper into each each video campaign that you was running that's nice. so that will help you to get this um, numbers quicker okay let's let's move on let's go to smart alerts the smart alerts it's actually how the sellerize gets started about mm -hmm. i think Six years ago, when we was just growing inside Amazon, we used to have about 300 SKUs. And oh. we've always been uh, working with the most competitive niches where, can, where competition is absolutely insane. I don't know why, but for some reason, I like to be challenged. And that's what, mm -hmm. why we was working with the, so many SKUs and uh, these competitive niches. Just giving you a quick example, I remember there was one of the SKUs we started with my partner. Uh, we put $2,500 each. It was about $5,000 budget. And in one year, we made $2.5 million from one SKU. Unfortunately, this product been attacked by competition after one year. And we start to get about 30 to 40 negative reviews, one star reviews every single day. But uh, if any one of you guys will ever experience competition attack, let me tell you something because I've been through so many of them. <laughs> First of all, none of the attack is last forever, okay? Like none of the success lasts forever. None mm -hmm. of the downside is last forever. So just be prepared for any situations in your business or personal life. Everything will be changed from bad to good and from good to bad for some time. So I've been through so many attacks and majority of the people who attacking Usually the marketing strategies are so weak, they don't understand actual business. So that's why I always like telling to all Amazon sellers, learn how the business works. Don't just learn Amazon, learn like how like business rules and fundamentals works, like like how works financial situations, how how to analyze your P&Ls. This information you, you have to acquire, it. otherwise you will always stay, stay a small guy. But uh, if you have intention to grow or just understand everything in your company better, make more stable and long-term company, educate yourself. So with yeah. the smart alerts, we didn't have a tool back in the days that will control. We, I used to have 15 people in the uh, Philippines. The only job they used to have, it's on a daily basis, like hundreds of times per, per day, just going through each listing and, and check images, reviews, everything, you know? So mm -hmm. imagine mm -hmm. 15 mm -hmm. people consistently going through the listings nonstop. Just yes. looking for imperfections, changes. changes. Perfections. Yeah. 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 And that's why we developed this alert system. Nowadays, there's already plenty of alerts. The good part about Sellerize, uh, we made this so advanced. You can have a different channels. Let me just show, like, let's say we have a create, we can create a channel. What does it do, Sellerize? Sellerize is, uh, let me just go here first, explain. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. the Sellerize is monitoring your Amazon listings and your seller account 24 7, non stop for any type of changes, attackers, hijackers, uh, any mistakes that Amazon can do for you or maybe competition. I will give you like a quick example. Let's say there's, you can see like whole list of different monitoring points that you can do. There, there's more of them because this is the demo account. On the real account, you will have even more. 
But one of the good examples that I'm going to give you, let's say large order. Let me see where is that. Yeah, you see large order alert. We always have uh, 20, uh, I stop to up to 20 large order. If someone buy more than 20, for me, it's, it's, a, it's a trigger right away because on average, people don't buy that many quantities like units per, per order. And yeah. uh, I remember I got an alert from, uh, from Sellerize that someone uh, just placed 10 orders back to back by 20. And the moment I see this alert, I went back to Seller Central and I made the edit of my listing. And you know, like you, you have a like a, you have ability to set up what's the maximum amount of units one person can buy. I change, I check, change this to one unit per person, and all my attacks stopped. You know, probably someone was trying to buy out my inventory. It was right before the Q4, and it happened yeah. a lot actually. Someone buys out your inventory, you're out of stock. Tomorrow is a Black Friday. <laughs> Uh, you don't have a stock and then uh, Amazon cancel these orders and in three days you back in stock. Wow. But uh, <laughs> Black Friday just gone. Oh, guys, you couldn't even imagine how many how many attacks I've seen in the last eight years working with Amazon. <laughs> but overall, if you act fast enough, majority mm -hmm. of the things can be solved within minutes, you know, like so even sometimes Amazon can remove your main image. This will really affect your conversion. If you get alert fast enough, you just go back to yeah. Amazon, change the back the image. And uh, I always suggest you to have a like a backup files. Like for example, sometimes Amazon delete your image. There was nothing wrong, just competition complained a few times, they removed the image. So you have a second set of images that you can upload without Amazon seeing that you upload exactly the same image and then they're not gonna give you like some policy violation for submitting uh, infringement content. So, and you can see, like, if something happened to your listening, we can send you the notifications and notifications can be sent right here. Like you can also set up different configurations for the different listings. Also, if let's say you are a wholesaler and you don't want to get notifications for every listing, because sometimes you have only a few units and you don't care about um, listing changes, you can just disable mm -hmm. some of the mm -hmm. listings. Also, sometimes people, I can show like there's configurations. You see disable uh, for new products. A lot of wholesale guys, they add like, hundreds of SKUs per day. They don't want to be bombarded by spam kind of of all the changes. So you can just disable alerts because we automatically add products to this list from your seller central. But at the same time, it's just if you don't want it, you can just disable it and then manually add them to the monitoring list. Also, we have here alert for the uh, reimbursable units. It's mm -hmm. something that I'm going to explain you a bit later, mm -hmm. but it's one of the most important alert to make sure Amazon is not losing your money all the time and you in you didn't miss amazon deadlines for getting this money back also inside smart alerts we have an advanced system for enterprise level companies or even the companies uh, with the employees and departments so here you can let's say you can you can assign different alerts to the different teams you can also choose where alerts are going to be sent to let's say mobile app slack channel or to the specific email you can also, let's say you have a, one team working with one brand and another team working with a, uh, another brand. So let's say you call this team A and then you assign them like specific seller account. Let's say you have five seller accounts. So you assign them one or two accounts or maybe one team is working with USA marketplace. Another team working with the Canadian marketplace. And it's, let's say it's a different people or they, they work in a different time zones. So you understand your company better. Mm -hmm. What I can tell you, is such an advanced system to customize. I also explained this in, in our video tutorial right here. You will be able to see this in a, in a quick explanation how it works, okay? Nice, man. That's a smart alert. So the smart alerts, I, I love this tool. It's, it's very powerful. Sometimes my team, because right here you can set up alerts like most critical alerts, you can you can mm -hmm. give them a priority, let's say dimension change or mm -hmm. listing suppression. And if listing gets suppressed, uh, I get alert to my mobile app. So it means I can see it right away. I don't want to see every alert. I don't care if someone give me a seller feedback, like because I don't take care of it. My my team will take care of it. But if something happens, let's see like a like a red alerts. This is something I want to see, and I want to make sure my team will be on top of it. Or at least let's say it happened on Saturday. On Saturday and Sunday, our team doesn't work. But if alert has happened, we have a rule in the company: those who is responsible for these tasks, they have to kind of activate themselves <laughs> and go talk to the support or fix the issue. That's kind of a rule in the company. Good tool, man. Yeah. Let's move on. We have a couple, couple more tools to mm -hmm. go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So let's go to the review, review section, review. We will start with a, a review dashboard. Review dashboard is actually showing to you all the statistics for all the products you have. Let me show you like, let's say this product. 
let's say once we click on it we can see the the stats the rating the amount of reviews we also see how many reviews stays on a on a page one yeah mm -hmm. you see like negative on the page one so that's that's important because this way you would be able to monitor or maybe clean somehow your I'm not going to give you like any advices in terms of improvement of your main page because uh, some mm -hmm. of them, some of the strategies will be non-TOS compliant, but uh, maybe learn the strategies somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> but I suggest you to learn how mm -hmm. to take reviews on your products uh, under control. I will give you today also a couple more tools that will help you to delete negative reviews and get more positive reviews. And these tools that I'm going to share with you, they they 100% US compliant and that's exactly what we do inside Sellerize. All the tools are kind of approved by Amazon because we all the time speak with their team and mm -hmm. they help us to optimize to make sure everything is, is correct. Okay, here we have several also options and tabs. You see the common phrases. Uh, once mm -hmm. you're going to land on a real account, you can see like a one, two, three or four words. You can, you can see what combinations of words people use when they describe uh, your product and when they live in, let's say, five-star reviews or mm -hmm. negative reviews. So you can see, let's say, someone saying like, this is not a real account, this is a demo yeah. account. Yeah. But in real life, you, you're going to see that, let's say, this uh, looks so much better, can lead to leaving your uh, negative, let's say, like one-star reviews or two-star reviews. And by looking at these keywords, you, you can see the combinations and then like, hey, why people are always complaining about the size of the product? Maybe it's something we're missing inside our mm -hmm. bullet points, title, or description. And people mm -hmm. get confused when they buy in the product. Maybe they expect a pink color while uh, our designer made it more like a, a red color-ish. Mm -hmm. And uh, all these all this questions and all this uh, information will help you just to improve your product overall. Yes. You also have a goal calculator, which means, let's say you at rating 4.5, but you want to have 4.7. We'll, we'll show you exactly how many reviews you need to get or remove. So this will help you to kind of set up additional goals. I started using Sellerize uh, from this. Uh, this was the <laughs> tool I have heard, I think, from you, maybe in some video or something. And yeah. somehow this is, you know, so cool, cool, nice. Yeah. Also, you can see like review gains, how they've been added to your listing throughout the year or last 30 days. So this will help you to see it. In addition here, uh, you can see like common phrases. It's kind of just a tool I, I just added, like what people use as a description of your, of your product. If you have guys, but overall, if you ever have any ideas, how would you like to improve your review dashboard or any type of dashboard you have on site, Sellerize, Always reach out to us. You see on the right-hand yeah, side, we have yeah. a, a chat here. Our guys, they try to stay in the live chat all the time. But let's say if they're busy, just leave the request. And we we'll always will get back to you as soon as possible to make sure we we'll answer all your questions. And if you have any help, we're also going to help you. But you need to also understand that our support chat inside Sellerize, we added the support chat to make sure you understand how to use the tools what the buttons to click or if you have any technical issues or maybe if you don't understand any numbers but our support is not intent to educate you how to sell on amazon and sometimes it becoming a problem mm -hmm. because sometimes people come to us and they say hey how i can get more reviews on on or how i can uh, get more sales this is something that our chat team cannot uh, support you because we have a lot of developers or we also we also have some people with the amazon uh, selling experience but they cannot take responsibility for the consulting that you're asking them for, for you asking them from them. So they always will tell you like, unfortunately, we cannot consult you on a specific ways of growing your Amazon business. But you just, you just need to understand this, okay? For, for this, there is a YouTube channel of Sellerize. I guess there they can, people, we can leave it in the description as well, along with a free account and a discount. Okay. Educate themselves there, uh, the people that are watching. Yeah, no, we, we do weekly calls about different tips and tricks, how to grow your Amazon business. But overall, uh, my personal opinion, guys, sometimes it's good to, to get maybe some complete course. But a lot mm -hmm. of times what I did, I was just learning myself. I was just digging inside all the numbers dig. and uh, going inside Seller Central and looking at every metric as possible. That's how I, I educate myself. And also a practical experience, just, just test it. Sometimes people say to me like, hey, what type of com campaign should I activate? <laughs> activate both, try it, you know, see it, how it goes, you know, like, and then scale it. So yeah. everything will go through a uh, test, failure and success. And then once you see you have a track record of success and so at some things, you would be able to to scale it to the bigger numbers. But don't don't try to scale 
unless you have a proof of concept, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes it could be very costly for you. All right, the next tool we have here, it's called Review Requester. Uh, it's one of the most common tools on the market right now. I think we mm -hmm. was one of the first company who enabled this feature for to use for Amazon sellers. We have a free Chrome extension for that which is like more for the beginners. We have about 10,000 users every day using a review requester Chrome extension. We ha oh. also have this review requester here inside Sellerize, which is in a paid desktop version. And it's like highly advanced. And if you like serious about making money on Amazon, this is something that you th that you have to activate in your in your seller account, in, in your Amazon account. What makes this review requester different from any other uh, requesters? So let me explain you. Majority of the requesters, they work as a, browser ma manipulation which means let's say you have a chrome extension and chrome extension goes and click on, on the buttons inside your seller account and mm -hmm. it kind of replicate your manual work while review requester that we have here it's fully approved system by amazon and it's working through the user permission which completely changed the way how amazon looked when you when system requests the reviews we have one of the biggest amount of filters how you can set up you can send a review request only to people who left you seller feedbacks for and like five stars and higher. You can prevent people mm -hmm. who, let's say someone left you a one star seller feedback. It means person didn't like your product. And imagine you go, you're going to request a review from this person. So most likely he's going to leave you a negative review. So you, you want to remove these people from the request list, correct? Mm -hmm. uh, also, you would like to use a repeat buyers. Let's say some people, they don't, they don't want to risk it. They only request and reviews from repeat buyers. Repeat buyers, it's 100% guaranteed they're going to leave you positive reviews yeah. because they like your product. People with the refunds, if someone lets you uh, refund, if someone requests the refund, probably they don't like your product. <laughs> and also we have here a custom request time, which means we have two main options that I like. It's called AI time and buy time. So AI time, it means... Our system analyzing when you're receiving the most amount of oh, reviews wow. per day. And based on that, we're making a review requests on this time. Interesting. And a, yeah, and buy time, it's based on a customer behavior. Let's say if your customer buying bought this product at 5 p.m. two weeks ago, we're kind of assuming that at 5 p.m., let's say five days later, or two weeks mm -hmm. later, you're going to be more active online, which is, wow. you know, like you, you can test. My favorite is a buy time. But some people, they use the AI time. Uh, everything else is uh, simple morning, afternoon, evening, ASAP. As, as, as fast as this option of review request is available, you send in the request. So I, I would just play with these two filters. But overall, if you would like to, to use one of those, it's also available for you. Also, the daily limit. Let's say you, if you just sign up for Sellerize and you don't want too many requests to, to go out, you can do the daily limit. Or let's say you want to request start from some specific date let's say from like yesterday, you also need to understand one, one simple fact. If someone already requests the review from some other tool, maybe you used to use a Chrome extension or maybe you was using some other companies, you would be able to see who exactly requested the review. Let's say you see like sent by Sellerize, mm -hmm. but if it's someone else sent, we also analyze, we're not going to send this twice or we're not going to mm -hmm. click this again. We're going to see this, someone already requested the review and we're going to skip this order. Mm -hmm. That's that's how the Sellerize is set up. It's very, it's very advanced review requester system. Also, if you, let's say if you're doing giveaways or whatever you do, or maybe you have like a list of your buyers who bought your products uh, and uh, let's say the products was buying with a discount. Maybe you don't want to request reviews from those guys. You can upload the list. You see like you can import orders right here with the mm -hmm. template. Mm -hmm. Let's say you can upload like 100 orders and these people will be excluded from request and review from them. This system is, is highly advanced. We was working on this for so long. You also can do like custom configurations for other products. You can and disable, for example, there's another practical way of uh, using disable option. I don't know, let's say you order products. You've been working with some factory for so long and now you order from them another batch, but batch become, I don't know, bad. Like smell is not good. Let's say they use plastic that smells bad or like it happened to me, I used to sell powder and they supplied to me powder by the certificate of analysis, everything looks good. Everything is fantastic. But you have a little smell, you know, like it happened to me about mm -hmm. like five years ago. And we start to get a lot of uh, turns. Of course, you don't want to request reviews from these clients. You want to disable product until your batch is sold out or you fix the issue. That's, mm -hmm. that's very important for you. So 
Sometimes success in, in your business is just acting fast, is uh, spotting the problem. And that's why smart alerts that you've seen before mm. on my previous explanation is so important for you to enable and monitor entire your business. We have another tool here. It's called Review Downloader. Review Downloader is a simple tool. It works like a Chrome extension. You can go to any page on Amazon and when you click uh, download the reviews, it's going to download all the reviews from your Amazon listing. The reason why it's important right now, Walmart is allowed you to uh, add reviews to any Walmart listings. So you go to Amazon listings, you download all the reviews, you use keyword processor here, you upload all the reviews there, and you remove all the words like uh, Amazon, Prime, uh, Delivery. Then you take all this list and you upload this to your Shopify store. So then from Shopify store, you can you can go to Amazon, uh, to the Walmart and tell them, hey guys, this is the list of, uh, this is my product. And I have, let's say 1000 reviews. Could you please connect these reviews to my Walmart listing? And now mm -hmm. you have 1000 reviews on your Walmart listings kind of overnight. Oh. It's a cool hack. It still works. Try yeah. it. It's, it. It works really, really fantastic. So you don't need to like do giveaways to get reviews. It's like you can connect and it's going to work for you. The Walmart can be tough on that, but uh, overall they're going to do it. We just, we just add in like thousand, two thousand reviews on, on uh, our products on Walmart. So <laughs> nice just one. a quick practical uh, advice for you. Nice. So a review puncher, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Review puncher, it's another tool that we have here. Review puncher, it's something that uh, works as a, if review request will help you to get more positive reviews, then review puncher helps you to delete negative reviews. I have a case study. I didn't post this on social media yet, how uh, review puncher actually helping to fight with the negative reviews. But overall, what it does, Review Puncher will send requests to your buyers who give you one, two, or three star reviews. Uh, they're going to provide them either a courtesy refund or they're going to provide them a replacement. And I know, I know for a fact, I have a, I have a review on Amazon. I'm going to share uh, this on social media later where a person been contacted by Review Puncher asking uh, to get a refund or replacement. And the person been so happy that we reach out to him and start to communicate with us and remove the negative review. They change it one star review to the five star review, which was like absolutely fantastic because it's fully automated. A lot of tools that you have inside Stellarize, the intention of these tools, it's to make your job easier inside Amazon. So because as an Amazon seller, you will have a lot of distractions. You need to take care of the reviews, rankings, product optimization, conversion optimization, inventory shipments and so on, mm -hmm. so on. Tools like that, they help you to, to put things on automation. And the good part about the Review Puncher, it's also fully Amazon TUS compliant tool. They actually release this to help you to fight with the negative reviews. And so to make sure you follow the TUS by Amazon. So yeah, basically that's it. Mm -hmm. That's a, about the Review Puncher. Uh, once you register to Sellerize, make sure you activate all of these tools like Smart Alerts, Review Requester. There's plenty of other tools that you would uh, would be able to work with. So Review Puncher will help you also to, to work with these uh, negative reviews. Nice, man. Let's move right now to keywords. keywords. We have four tools right here. Currently, we're working on a few more. They're in beta testing, but right now, guys, we have four and we're going to review them. The Keyword Tracker is the tool that basically help you to track your positions of your product on Amazon. It's pretty much awesome tool. You can export products here, but at the same time, once you register for Sellerize, we automatically help you to track main keywords for your Amazon listings. I'm not sure if you, if you know, but Amazon has a specific um, tools inside Amazon to see what exactly your product is indexed for and what is the main relevancy for your product. That's why we know exactly what you index for. We take these keywords, we put them inside your, um, this is demo account. So it's like, it's demo keywords. They're not real, but overall you're going to see the keywords. And from the moment you register for Sellerize, we start to track these keywords for you. It's mm -hmm. going to show like on what page it stays, positions, search rank, your trend, so much other information. It's also going to track your pages and other stuff related to the keywords. Like Amazon's kind of, choice, right? Stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Everything, mm -hmm. you can see the trends here. Pretty much everything you need to track is you can see like Amazon choice pages, only one, but th this is the demo account. This yeah. is not the real uh, numbers. 
but I, we just put them here to make sure you understand how the system will look like for you. Keyword processor is also another tool that will help you to uh, separate keywords from, let's say, duplicates, or you want to have a, like a single keywords. Uh, I'm going to add here an additional tutorial because this will require us to do like more practical demo mm -hmm. of like adding keywords and separating them as you're going to see, like you can separate them by space, comma. You can also do ad additional, like you see, remove duplicate, single keywords, common words. There are some tools already similar to this. I just added here to make sure like you, uh, let's say you, you download the list and you want to remove all your competitor brand names. It's also mm -hmm. going to help you to do this. Or you want to remove numbers and maybe like remove an ASIN. So it, it helps you to process all this data or maybe you want to remove specific phrases as i showed to you before you can upload here entire list of your reviews and remove some uh, words of amazon or whatever whatever you will need to to do okay let's move to another two additional tools it's called keyword hunter and re-ranker it's one of the most powerful tools i would say on the market for the keyword research let's go to let's say keyword hunter the keyword hunter is help you to collect and do product research for for entire category, let's say we're going to take bicycle seat right now. Let me just click search. What does this uh, keyword hunter do? A lot of tools, when you do keyword research, they're going to give you 5,000, 10,000 yeah. uh, keywords. And a lot of these keywords, they doesn't make sense. And in majority of the time, when, when I see Amazon sellers, they actually don't understand like what type of keyword should I take first to rank? Do they just give you like uh, three, four, five keywords that they think the most relevant one? And sometimes they cannot even explain, like they only look at the search volume, which inside Sellerize, we ignore this number because search search volume, it's a, it's amount of searches that customer perform, but usually it doesn't equal to the amount of purchases he actually do. Inside Sellerize, we only count and we focus on actual sales per keyword on Amazon, which helps us and also convert. I'm going to give you like right now a few metrics that we focus on when we're trying to analyze the niche. So for example, in the bicycle seat, there's only 120 keywords that actually make in sales. Every other keyword that is available or maybe is going to be given by other tools, just don't waste money. You know, like <laughs> it's it's going to just create a problem for you when you're trying to, to rank your product. So this, if you're going to rank for 120 keywords, that's exactly what will will be required for you to be on the top of Amazon. So now you can see like there's 52 products that competing with you. And also the average market availability is 56%. Uh, I'm going to explain you later what does it mean mar market availability, which is also important number when you, when you analyze your niche. Uh, right here, you can see the key keyword performance. This keyword performance, it's per specific keyword, like a bicycle mm -hmm. seat. Mm -hmm. So we can, if I'm going to scroll this to the, to the right, I can see exactly sales per these keywords, but this is them account. So that's the data from August. Yeah. So, but uh, you can just have a sense of information. So look, mm -hmm. this is amount of sales per day per the specific uh, keyword. And that's exactly what Amazon expect you to, to have as sales. Let me repeat this. Sometimes people, they, they look at numbers and they try to give away 50 units per day for the specific keyword, but Amazon algorithm, Amazon kind of brain, you know, like, is so smart nowadays. It's going to spot that you was trying to manipulate system. So yeah. you have to sell as much as they expect. So if the bicycle seat, uh, Amazon expectations is only 12 sales per day on position number one, then you cannot exist at the beginning more than that. Because mm -hmm. if you will try to do 25, they know it's abnormal and mm -hmm. they're going to penalize you for this and you're going to lose your ranking because... The main idea is not only to rank to the top, it's to stay at the top. Mm -hmm. I hope you're following, you know, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, yeah, and everybody following too. So that's very important. You also can uh, download this data if you download the report. If you can download this report, you will be able to see this in an Excel file. So I make this more like a pretty visual part. Let me scroll just down here. You can see the semantic core. That's the list of keywords that uh, is 120 keywords. In this list, you can see the metric that we use is called search rank, which is uh, primarily more like a BSR on Amazon, like a bestseller rank. It's a position of uh, of the power of the keyword. It's not a search volume. Mm -hmm. So, and right here you can see the sales, and this sales is only uh, organic sales. It doesn't include PPC. Mm -hmm. So, 
That's why when you're trying to rank, rank organically, you want to make sure you meet these expectations by Amazon and, and you're gonna rank. The next part is here, it's called conversion, which is very, very important as well, because a lot of time you take, you try to take the keyword, but conversion is low. When, when we try to rank the keywords, we try to take the keywords that has conversion 18% and, and higher. I like the conversion 20% and higher, because look, if you're gonna rank for the keyword that has a conversion of let's say 19%, if the conversion is high, you're gonna stay at the top. If it, the conversion is so low, you, you can be kicked out from the top positions. You're gonna lose the amount of money that you spend for the ranking campaign, which is very, very important. And mm -hmm. a lot of time, if you will check, let's say there's a tools that is showing you like search volume per keywords, you're gonna see a lot of time that search volume doesn't equal to sales, which is absolutely uh, true. A lot of tools, they don't have a true uh, search volume. They kind of estimate the search volume. This yeah. is the most important part. And even people, when they go to Product Opportunity Explorer inside Amazon, it shows you combined search volume per three, five keywords or some category keywords. It's also is not helping to estimate the power of the specific keyword and ranking campaign when you're trying to actually dominate. And like, for example, like you see like a, a bike seat for women, comfortable 17%, almost 18. It's a good keyword. It's, it has a 880 cells per month, which is nice. And also another uh, metric that we have is called other cells. Yeah. What other cell means? This is the cells from top three mm -hmm. of Amazon. Let's say we're going down here, you see like some, and these cells, other cells, it sells outside of top three. So when we're trying to rank for the keywords, we want to make sure that keywords that are uh, we're ranking for, the other cells also higher than uh, 40%. Because if Let's say the uh, the other cells is only, you see like, for example, here, like conversion 29%, but mm -hmm. other cells is only 8%. So yeah. if, we, if let's say we was running a ranking campaign and we couldn't get to the top three, then outside of top three, there's almost no cells. Mm -hmm. And uh, we wouldn't be able to get this money kind of back from what we invested into the ranking campaign. But if let's say there's a 60% cells also stays outside of top three, then we would be able probably to get or 49, 47 percent. You see, so yeah. we use a formula of two main metrics. Metric number one, it's conversion per keyword, and also other sales. And that's how we prioritize what keywords we're gonna use for title, for mm -hmm. ranking campaigns. Mm -hmm. And that's it's kind of I would say like bird view. You know, like so there's a way more analytics that we use when we're trying to rank the do the ranking campaigns. So also the next uh, the next app we have it's called Dima, related. What is yeah. the saturation there in semantic core? We had the the other parameter saturation. Uh, it's the second on the left. Yeah, yeah. So the saturation but... is is a is a metric that we use as um. So let me let me explain it this way. When we build this keyword list, yeah. we're trying to we're trying to understand we're trying to combine you a list of uh, keywords that been visible in other competitor products to make sure that keyword is valuable. So let's say if we're gonna have here keyword Starbucks, they're probably, not the Starbucks, Schwinn, you know, like, so Schwinn was only, the situation is 10, which means uh, 10 ASINs been using this keyword, but okay. we know it's a br brand name keyword. So probably we're gonna skip this keyword, but okay. overall the keyword is so powerful. The saturation is amount of ASINs that mm -hmm. actually dominating in this niche, you know, like of the keyword. That so, means it appeared in top of search dominated, yeah. you mean? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Throughout uh, 640 days, you see? Yes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been switched. Yeah. I don't use this metric saturation. We just have it because some people ask us for it. But mm -hmm. uh, overall, maybe someone will find this helpful. So, I would say this way. The, the higher the number yeah, yeah. of this uh, saturation, yeah. it means the more people been switching uh, top positions for this mm -hmm. keyword throughout 640 days. So, People probably couldn't hold the mm. hold the position or something, you know. So I understand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then we go to related products. That's all the products that uh, kind of been used for combining this uh, semantic core. So we was taking keywords from these guys, making sure they they all cross. But uh, we also have another tool which is called Keyword Ranker. The Keyword Ranker uh, is also showing you additional keywords that kind of been missed inside the uh, semantic core. But usually it's keywords more specific to the niche. Let me give you an example. For example, you want to sell bicycle seat with LED light. Mm -hmm. So 
when you when you type here bicycle seat we're gonna try to find all the products that have been sold in a bicycle seat and if bicycle seat with led lights been sold only by one asin this keyword is not going to be visible here but yeah. you would be able to find this keyword by downloading data from these top guys and i'm gonna show you right now how to do it and then once you combine this list you will gonna have the most comprehensive list of all the keywords that will help you to dominate in the bicycle seat niche. So uh, like the big yeah. keywords that got a lot, a lot of sales and even the small keywords that got sales here and there. You're still going to have them. But yeah. they're not appearing in the other table in the semantic core. Yeah. We can still use them because they're still they've, at some point have gotten sales and maybe you, why not? If, yes. Yeah. If you are related, if let's say you if have sell related. bicycle, if you sell bicycle seat without uh, yeah. LED light, that's then you don't sense. need this keyword because uh, you're not relevant. And even mm -hmm. if you're going to try to rank for this keyword, even the, if the keyword is has sales, it doesn't make any sense for you because you're just going to yeah. waste ranking budget. That's why that's why the system is built at the filtration level. Mm -hmm. uh, as you see, like you have a semantic core and then you have uh, people who, like uh, other ASINs who was doing the sales, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you also can see there's some insights here. Uh, competitor analysis... That's another tool that also powerful. Here we combine three top guys and take their analytics and also get the keywords from top three guys that been used and bring sales to them. As in Symanticore, there's you can see in related products how many people we took to to analyze mm -hmm. the data and combine the data to make sure we have all the most comprehensive Symanticore. But yeah. in competitor analysis, we take only three top guys mm -hmm. who've been on top three for the last uh, six hundred and like forty one days. The, the main guys who get the most amount of sales. And then we can see the keywords that was bringing sales to them. You also can download this list and take the keywords from here. From my experience, when I try to download Symanticore, and the moment I try to expand by downloading data from my competitors, sometimes I find maybe five, six more keywords, sometimes mm -hmm. none, you know, to I make sure I, I just, my, my list is complete. So uh, I would say Semanticore is very, very complete list. But overall, we inside our SOPs for our team, we tell mm -hmm. them always download the reports from top five guys, remove duplicates and put the keywords that we're missing. If, this, if these ASINs are similar with the values, what we're selling. Mm -hmm. So as I was mentioning, bicycle seat with LED light, I would find bicycle seats with LED lights download their re-ranking report which i'm going to show you in a minute and then just um, take this list and combine it so basically you, you're going to download the report it's going to look like an excel file and then let me just show you like keyword re ranker because basically we finished here we'll go to keyword re ranker in keyword re ranker you can put any asin and just click search or if you're going to go let's say to keyword hunter you go to keyword hunter you go to related products if you're going to click on any of these ASINs, it's going to take you to Keyword Re-Ranker. And let me show you how it's going to look like. So let's say if you decide to go from here, you, you put the ASIN, you click search. And now it's going to show you a product with a name and photo. And then it's going to show you the semantic core of this specific ASIN, which is, it used to be 300 keywords that used to bring sales to this ASIN. Now it's only seven at the top. So he generally speaking lost 293 keywords which is a lot you know like so yeah. probably this this product is not performing as as good as it used to be and yeah so you can see exactly what keywords used to bring him in sales you can see uh, what keywords bring in sales right now so you can see the list majority you see it's keywords with the brand names mm -hmm. so probably the the guy just lost organic position on majority of the keywords let me show you like active keywords but also the good part here as well it's to see when he lost this position you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and it's it's important if you lost this position just recently i would i would try to rank this uh keyword first because mm -hmm. amazon still feel you're relevant the same way uh, if you're gonna go and let's say put your competitor here let's say if you're analyzing your product if you see that you lost your position just recently try to rank it back because it's going to be the most easiest for you and also you can see which keyword used to bring you how much how much how many sales so mm -hmm. you, you you can evaluate the power of the keywords and like what was what was the power of this keyword towards your product but then if you're gonna look at uh, your competitor asins look at what what keywords they lost let's say three months ago four months ago six months ago probably they missed this point 
and then take this keyword and try to rank it yourself if you're relevant. As I said, like bicycle seat with LED light would be easier to rank if the guy lost this ranking, let's say three months ago. Mm. You got it? So, and also you can download this report right here. As mm. I mentioned to you, I, I'm not going to go through like, uh, because it's more like already like additional step. Yeah. It's just combining Excel spreadsheets. Oh, you can, you can go on YouTube and uh, look uh, for my video, how practically I do the keyword research. Uh, with the keyword hunter and Renega, I give the, there's like way more information because this videos usually goes for like a couple hours. And we'll uh, leave it in the description for people to watch, maybe up here in the card as well. And we'll do that, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Already I give like a, a lot of information for you guys just to digest, you know, nice. try to work with this. And then after you you digest this information, just try to try to implement, okay. There was uh, also the main uh, keyword hunter titles founder, something like yeah. this. Let me show you. Like title founder is all like beta beta testing tool. Not my favorite, to be honest. You know, like so usually I skip this as a video tutorial. But this is how it works. You know, like you can click on any keyword. Let's say if you like some keyword and let's say you click it. Oops, sorry. So it, it's going to be added to the title founder. And okay. then you kind of just build a build a tool. You see, build the, the title based on the keywords here, because now you can see all the data about keywords from here. Quite like that, you know? So you can you can change it, you know, like you can just uh, remove some keywords. It's gonna show you the matches right here. It's going to be updated. So, and also at the end, it's gonna show you the power. The power, it's combined power of um, all the keywords that you added. Kind mm. of a, a build that you, you, let's say if you're gonna remove the seed and you're gonna add seeds, then you're going to see, okay, how it's going to look now. But what is my main problem with this? It's you can have a duplicates here. So I'm still working on make it title founder uh, or builder. We call this like a title. So the idea is to founder. build a title right here and then have all the best keywords. So the power exactly. is big and the the title is readable and we have all the best keywords in the title. If we can do that, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the main idea too. So you're not working in Excel file, but you already have all the data here and that's you nice. already can combine, you know? Yeah. So that's, uh, you also can see, let's say you can copy and paste here a title from your competitor and you can see combined power of your competitor uh, mm -hmm. title. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's also going to help you because it has a lot of information together, combined and analyzed for you at the same time. Nice, man. Nice. Reimbursements. Mm. Let's talk about reimbursements. It's one of the most important tools for everybody who sign up to Sellerize at first because reimbursement is something that's going to give you the most amount of money in a short period of time. Because the moment, guys, you register for Sellerize, first I suggest you to go to reimbursements and check how much money Amazon actually owes you. And the reason why you have to do it, it's right here, how much money Amazon owes you. Mm. The reason why you have to do it because Amazon has a specific limit of time of how long they give you opportunity or window to request the money back from Amazon. As you can see here, like a zero to nine months, it's like how long the potential money was sitting there, nine to 18 months. And you see this 18 months plus, it usually something, some cases you can request money only after 90 days. But here we, we put this in a red color to make sure you understand this money is unreversible. So it would be impossible for you to get this money back from Amazon. And the biggest case I ever seen, it was $33,000 been lost here wow. by some seller because he didn't take action to request this money back from Amazon. Uh, it's pretty much very easy. We have a dashboard here, cases that you can manage. Uh, let me go back to this. You see different categories. Since mm -hmm. it's a demo account, there's way more categories already available in a real account. Mm -hmm. Once you enable, our system will recalculate everything inside your accounts and we're going to see like how much money Amazon lost you for the destroyed inventory, damaged inventory or missing FBA shipments. But let's say we want to get money back for destroyed inventory. So we have this category where we choose this, we click next. Then we choose a product, let's say that we want to get reimbursed for. We choose type of reimbursements, click mm -hmm. confirm, click next. And then we just click create the case, confirm, ta-da. <laughs> case been created inside seller I, seller central so you don't need to even log into seller uh, seller central right now sellerize will automatically create this case for you and now you would be able just to manage this case and uh, see the response from amazon when they get money back for, uh, to you like for example you see this like 
we have a status pending answered whatever you know like so and also mm -hmm. we, we're gonna monitor who submit the cases who open the cases it's been salarized it's been done manually or maybe someone else was working on your case because a lot of time a lot of people they're already using some service providers the good part about salarized we don't charge any commission or any percentage there's no hidden fees everything included in your subscription so basically you're getting this money back i think the biggest case i've seen how much money Amazon been owing to the seller was 500 something thousand dollars. Imagine $500,000. The most funny part about this was the guy was having a service provider who was uh, helping him to get the money back from Amazon. They find out that in July, the service provider told them that he reimbursed them $100,000, $107,000. This money never been deposited to the seller central account. And the service provider charged, I think like 10 or 20% for this commission for his commission. So imagine like Amazon didn't give you money back, you paid for the commission. <laughs> and now you're almost at the moment that Amazon will never get this money back to you because it's already a time sensitive case. So they find out this and uh, because I was on a call with their team and they requested money from Amazon, Amazon just requested the invoice and it helped them to get this money. So imagine like you get a hundred thousand dollars from Amazon just by using Sellerize. That was uh, fantastic, like as a, as a case study for us. Majority of these categories would be easier to, to get money back from Amazon. As I showed you, only a few clicks away from getting money. Only FBA shipments will get you a bit more work. Let me show you. You, you, you click next, you choose the, the shipment that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. And then once you click next, we're going to give you instructions on how to get money back from Amazon. We even give you like a templates, what to do. And also, if you're going to click on this link right here, it's going to take you right to the seller central to open the case specifically for specific transactions, specific shipment ID. Mm -hmm. And also we have here, it's called shipment documents. As you can see right here, shipment documents. Oh, the thing is, it's a live. Okay, let me go live. So mm -hmm. if you go to shipment documents, you can see, let's say you're working for the specific item. Say this is item been lost. You can see the shipment and you can upload the documents right before you start to work on a reimbursement case. So let's say if someone in your team, the logistics team, they send in their inventory to Amazon, they have a shipment ID, they can go here and they can upload BOL invoices, everything here. So the next person who is going to work on your reimbursements can come here and take this papers to submit back to Amazon. So this way you optimize your work and uh, amount you, you're spending of looking for the correct invoices, uh, BULs or any other documents. So reimbursements, it's uh, also you can go here on the dashboard. You can see how much money Amazon reimburses you in cash. So if they lost your inventory, they're probably going to get you back your money. But if let's say they find your inventory, then they're probably going to just give you back um, the units, you know, which is still uh, a money, which is also fine. And another part that I want to tell you guys, Amazon becoming more and more efficient with their reimbursements, which means they pre-calculate you reimbursements already sometimes themselves. They find the inventory sometimes. As you can see right here, we have an automated reimbursement. That's something that Amazon automatically calculate for you on your behalf. Mm -hmm. They don't want to make probably these mistakes anymore and they yeah. give you this money back. But if you have a service provider, they're probably going to claim that they did this for you and you're going to pay percentage. But we, we're just going to show you like this has been done automatically. Sellerize didn't do anything for that. So And do you remember we were talking about uh, smart alerts? Mm -hmm. But let's say if you're watching this on a different tutorials, we, inside Sellerize, we have a smart alerts. And in smart alerts, you have to activate for yourself the alert when the new reimbursement units is available. You see right here. Mm -hmm. So this way, you don't need to log into uh, reimbursements on a daily basis. Uh, you just waiting if alert comes to you, let's say if the money become available, let's say right here it's it's a zero because you already work on all your cases. But if you're going to enable the alert, you don't need to log it all the time and you will never miss the, the moment when Amazon gives you ability to get more money. So we're going to just notify you on your email, Slack channel or mobile application. We're going to send you notification here. Here, there's more money we found for you. Please log in back to Sellerize and request this money back from Amazon. That's the power of reimbursement by Sellerize. Nice, man. Good stuff. We have a couple more. We have inventory dashboard. In inventory dashboard is very simplified dashboard, similar to a PPC tool that we have. It's very simple. We just show you a value of your cost of goods, estimated sales that potentially can be made when you're going to sell this inventory and potential profit that you're going to be making from uh, selling this product. And since it's a demo account, you don't see here daily average units and days left. 
but on a real account you're gonna have exactly how many daily units on average you're selling and how many days left for your stock and you also would be able to see here details of your of your stock you see can like there's so much information you can actually look for your inventory here in the dashboards so it will help you to be more efficient but if you're looking for highly advanced inventory management dashboards or tools that probably you probably will need to look for something outside of salarize because some like for example we we have our warehouse the fulfillment center we use different tools like a ship stations and also a custom made software that help us to scan every unit similar to to amazon maybe less efficient <laughs> yeah. because amazon has a robots right now we have just humans yet <laughs> mm, so now. that's the inventory dashboard that's basically will help you to see like what's the inventory in transit you will be able to see once you log in and register your account mm -hmm. and the last one we have it's called adult checker adult checker it's a free tool to access you don't need to even register for salarize if you're going to log out here right now you would be able to log into adult checker what adult checker means sometimes amazon by mistake can assign your product to the adult category which is called sexual wellness your listing will be active but you, mm -hmm. your PPC will be disabled. You will have no imp impressions to your uh, PPC. And also you, you're going to lose all the keyword ranking. So your product would be not able to find on uh, Amazon. But inside Amazon, you're still active. That's why we have a in our smart alerts, alert system, we also have a adult checker alert. You're going to get the alert. But if you want to manually check what happened to your product, you can always put here ASIN. And it's going to show like, let me just quickly show like, for example, we take, we're going to take some product right now, copy, we'll go here, we type it here, check on adult. And you see like, it's not adult product, but mm -hmm. uh, in some cases, garlic press can become adult. If Amazon will assign this uh, ASIN incorrectly to mm -hmm. your, to your product, then you, you need to go to Amazon, to the seller central um, and to the seller support and tell them, Hey guys, my product been incorrectly assigned to adult category. Please help me to fix this issue. And that's, very, very important because if you're just going to contact Amazon and say, hey, something happened to my keyword ranking or mm, my PPC is not performing, they're going to send you in circles and uh, <laughs> and they're going to give you like some uh, templated answers that it can yeah. take you a few weeks just to figure out what's going on. But if you see exactly what happened, you give them a specific request and it will solve the issue way faster. Nice, man. That's good stuff. Yeah, sometimes yeah. people can, again, as you mentioned, um, like, lose their impressions BPC and they're trying to figure it out and what the hell is going on. And it's just like maybe a competitor some way did it or maybe yeah. there was a mistake yeah, yeah. on Amazon. Who knows? And they got flagged as adult. Yeah, exactly. So overall, also we have guys Walmart beta, which is a tool that you can sign up for. It's free to use. It stays within the subscription. You would be able to track your PPC. You would be able to track your sales in a Walmart account. Uh, we still continue um, optimizing and improving this tool, which is that's why it stays in beta. It's absolutely free to use. If you sell on Walmart, welcome to register for Sellerize Walmart account as well. Nice, man. Can we demand then touch on, if we finish the tools here of Sellerize, can we touch on the pricing of Sellerize? Maybe you can even share oh, yeah. the page of pricing. Yeah. So for those who are interested, I'll remind there's a free trial in the description with a, some sort of discount that yeah. we'll be able to get from Dima and Sellerize, which is pretty cool, I think. And uh, where are the prices, man? Maybe you will see what... Yeah, what... yeah. Let me just show it to you guys. The price is basically built, it starts from 1999. Mm -hmm. And based based on the size of your account, it will, will just grow higher. So each account will have a, a different, not limitations, but uh, settings. 1999 account is the basic one. It, it just uh, includes one seller account and up to 1,000 orders. While the biggest account for 299 will, will include 10, 10 seller accounts and 150,000 orders per month, which is like very advanced already account so and if then, you guys interested in getting access to keyword hunter or keyword ranker these tools for keyword analytics only available starting from 99.99 which is like 100 bucks a month so which is will be also important for you to understand and also if you're looking for reimbursement tool that i also shown on the uh, tutorials mm. then reimbursement tool starts only from 39.99 a month package that's something that you need to consider what type of account you will need but when you register to sellerize the first seven days trial is going to be free for you you don't need to even choose the package you will have kind of a free trial to test every tool possible on sellerize after seven days the system will automatically recalculate the amount of orders you have and let's say if you have a 5,000 orders then you're going yeah. to be charged 39.99 per month 
but you also would be able, we have a very customized feature there where you'll be able to, to add additional features for yourself. You see like right here, we have like extra orders, every a thousand order you can add for two, $2 a month. Mm. So let's say you want to keep yourself an account for, let me show you 39.99 a month, but you have 6,000 orders. You don't want to jump on a yeah. package for nine, $99 because it's already exceed this for $2 That's extra fair. per month That's fair. and basically $41. You can, you can get extra orders for yourself or maybe extra keywords you want to track. There's like everything that you can adjust and customize if you, if you don't want to jump to the next level of the tool. So you don't need like, we, we try to build the Sellerize as fair as possible on pricing to make sure you guys get in the most out of it, but at the same time, you're not losing on functionality. Nice, man. So we saw the pricing of Sellerize. We saw all the tools pretty much in action. If anyone has any question, shoot them in the comments, but connected to specific tools. And hopefully me or Dima will answer them. And again, all the links are in the description. Dima, maybe before we wrap it up, like anything else I didn't ask you or should have asked or something you'd like to kind of tell us about Sellerize that I didn't ask or generally, man. Just just as a, a quick update, thanks you guys for yeah. watching this video. I know it's been like maybe a, a lot of information for you to digest. At the same time, the Sellerize is available in a Canadian, USA, and Mexican marketplaces currently. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working hard right now to add European market. And I think in the, just about a month, we're going to order. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, we already have European market because it's already in uh, beta production. So some people are already tasting our European market ability to connect. And also we add in additional tools all the time. And as I mentioned before, if you guys feel that you need some additional functionality or you like additional buttons or need extra explanation, mm -hmm. don't feel pressure, just reach out to us, tell us, we always hear you. Majority of the tools and improvements inside Sellerize we've done because of your feedback. And that's the much appreciated because a lot of time when I work, uh, let's say I need this functionality my, for my business and that's enough for you. And sometimes you come to me, you give me an example, and I'm like, oh my God, that's a brilliant idea. So don't be shy, just reach out, give us, or maybe you, you, you use some other tools and now you're switching to Sellerize and you're missing something that you've been uh, looking for, mm -hmm. or maybe uh, overall you love Sellerize, but this some piece that you want to just be added from somewhere else, give me example and show us and we're either going to add it or maybe we'll find a way to make it better for you. So that's kind of my request for, for you. Thank you so much for watching. Yeah, thanks Dima. I really appreciate your time and uh, it was really detailed and I guess to the point with good, with many, many actually like things we can take for people who are maybe not yet using Sellerize. Generally, they can implement them in their business, like different mindset things that we talked about. So I really appreciate that. Again, all the links are in the description that we've mentioned in this video, a free trial. We have the other video, the longer video for uh, the keyword tool to kind of find keywords and uh, that you've created. We have your YouTube channel down in the description. I'm going to leave it all there. Thanks, man. Appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you, Ola. Have a good day, guys.